I was just uh, taking a moment to, to load uh, that live stream, so we'll bear, just wait a moment. Okay, so it looks like we're, we're live streaming. All right, uh, so uh, we're here this afternoon on Mr. Bump's motion for a judgment uh, related to uh, separate property uh, and as that relates to a committed intimate relationship. I've, I've read uh, that, that motion, I've read the declaration and the exhibits of Ms. Winkles, I reviewed a proposed order, and I also reviewed Ms. Gronitz's uh, answer to the motion and counter, uh, I, I reviewed that response, which was a three page document. So if there's any other documents that the parties wanted me to review, but I didn't, uh, please, please let me know. No, Your Honor, that was it. Um, I, I guess I would just redirect Your Honor to the order entering um, the summary judgment um, on the last motion, the motion for summary judgment, that order entering it, which is what this is um, related to. Correct. I, I, I was double checking that either I printed that out or I thought it was in attached to one of your exhibits, but that may not be the case. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Gronitz, any, any other documents that uh, you were anticipating that I would review in preparation for today's document? I, I do apologize, Your Honor. You do not have other documents in front of you. I have been working on a findings of fact because I'm trying to catch myself up to speed on the details that have been presented to court on this specific case versus our other cases. However, um, I'm still up, uh, filling in that matrix and you do not have it in front of you today, but there is a distinct dispute of material fact over these items and I'm trying to identify and quantify what that dispute looks like. It's a valuation issue, not a possession issue. No, I, uh, short answer is no, you don't have other documents for me. I do apologize. Okay, and so just to clarify, Ms. Garnett, you said you were working on basically the, the, per, the personal property and you were working on setting assigning values to them? <clears throat> Initially, this case was brought forth uh, because the plaintiff and or petitioner and respondent were in a committed intimate relationship where both pooled resources into joint assets. Those joint assets are what are listed in Exhibit F. So there is mutual interest in those assets. The respondent has possession and use of those assets through the duration of this dissolution. And I won't be disputing possession of those assets. I'm simply needing replacement value out of our partnerships to replace those assets because I need my business tools back. I need a vehicle back. I need all the things I bought over the last five years. I need a way to replace those items to continue my business. So until valuation of those items is assigned to this case, I'm willing to accept cash payment instead of disputing over the physical items. But there is a dispute in ownership because I bought and earned these items and I have investment value into them. I need investment value back out of them to make my balance sheet and my income statements work out for the next phase of life. So I am disputing ownership in, of the assets as far as valuation goes. Like I said, he has possession. He can maintain possession of the assets. But until I we determine what the valuation and the dissolution value of the partnership is, then uh, it seems premature to just assign him all the assets, all the income, everything from the relationship. I get all the debt and nothing to move forward with. So right. I need to balance it out. And Okay. I, yeah, I, I, think, I think I understand what you're saying. And then let me just maybe pose a clarifying question as it kind of relates to today's motion. In that December 29th, 2023 uh, order that the court entered, it indicates that the property identified in Exhibit F was purchased by Mr. Bob prior to June 2018, but after and or after April 23, 2023, is a separate property of, of Mr. Bob. And so there was there was that finding. And so you're talking about the evaluation of, of those items in Exhibit F? Yes. Those items were donated to the business partnership as consideration into the partnership in 2018 when we bought a piece of property and developed it together. So that was his interest into the partnership was those pre-owned tools that he had to contribute. He brought the tools and materials. I brought the skills and the labor. We, so those were pooled resources into a joint venture in 2018. They were part of the relationship assets, even though he bought them prior. Now he has a sentimental attachment because he had them before the relationship and he can maintain them. But all of those tools need replaced for my business to continue. So there's probably about $10,000 rough estimate of tools listed in exhibit F that he would claim a separate property, but he donated to our joint business venture, the Coal Creek renovation in 2018. And since that point, they have been mutual assets of our relationship since until we separated. 
Okay. So yes, I can test ownership of those, even though they were his separate property, because he used those as his consideration into our contract for the venture that we pooled our resources into. Okay. Yep. I really appreciate that explanation. Thank you. I'm just going to jot down one quick note. Okay, so uh, now that we just, uh, just established that there's no other documents to review in, in preparation for today's hearing, uh, I guess it's time for, for the hearing uh, for the purpose of which we're here today. Uh, so the motion was filed by Mr. Bob, so I'll hear first, please, from Ms. Winkles, and I'll hear from, from Ms. Donitz thereafter. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we have an order on uh, entering that motion for summary judgment, granting that motion for summary judgment. That's where the decision was already made as to the characterization of the property purchased prior to 2018. In that uh, motion for summary judgment hearing, uh, property was identified on Exhibit F. That property, uh, the court made a specific finding that that property was separate. Um, when you purchase property, the nature of that property, unless there's you know transmutation, uh, which there's not been any allegations of that, there weren't any on that motion for summary judgment, it doesn't change character. The character of property is whatever it was at the time you purchased it. But regardless of that, we already argued that. We had a hearing, 30 days have passed, there was no appeal, there was no motion for reconsideration, um, there, was, um, <clears throat> there was nothing of that effect. That order is a good order. It is a standing order before the court. The only thing we're here on today is not to relitigate this, it's already been litigated, the only thing we're here on is to make this a final judgment rather than the, and I say this word wrong every time and I practice and I still can't do it, interlocutory order of the motion, uh, the order on motion for summary judgment just needs to be made final. And the reason it does, there should be, there's nothing that would delay that. We've passed that 30 day mark. Um, additionally, it's real property. Um, there's mortgages that need to be paid. There's creditors and things like that. There is a reason to have this final order. Additionally, we're going to most likely a trial or settlement and that is why it's so important. Um, Ms. Granitz has kind of made my case for me. Um, if we keep arguing issues that have already been decided, unless there's a final judgment, we're going to be going back in time and it's going to cost everybody a ton of money um, for something that was already decided by the court. Findings were already made. We need this uh, final judgment on less than all claims so that everybody is aware of what we're actually litigating on at the time of trial or settlement. Um, so the issues don't get confused and we can deal with 2018 to 2023 things that were purchased during that time and only that time so that we can stay relevant, make the trial go forward. It's really judicial economy, finance, financial resources, the parties, and just pure understanding. So we'd ask that you enter our uh, judgment, our final judgment on less than all of the claims. And, and specifically, you're asking that the 2829 Parkview Drive residence, the, the boathouse and the personal properties contained in Exhibit F be deemed, be deemed separate property. That's it, Your Honor. Just exactly what it said in that motion for or that order on motion for summary judgment. Exactly that interlocutory order made final, and that's it. Right. It it should almost be word for word to the order on summary judgment. All right. And then to to Ms. Granit's comments earlier, where she was talking about the different values of the property uh, that in, in Exhibit F. Uh, if if I were to accept your argument and say the property in Exhibit F is separate property, is there? At trial, let's say, at trial, would Ms. Granitz be free then to argue, yeah, it is separate property, but it had this value and it was used for business purposes and that value should be taken into consideration if there uh, for any type of division of, of dollars or property? Well, if this were a dissolution, absolutely, separate property is always on the table. Yeah. Um, because this is a CIR, it's more of a gray area. They don't have the benefit of marriage and that that really... They are different, um, even though we sometimes blur those lines. It, it is different living um, without marriage and living with marriage under the law. Um, I'd say that she still has an argument. There is no spousal maintenance in a case of CIR, so that's going to be a problem. It sounds like what I'm hearing is that not so much of a CIR claim as something of a business agreement, um, some sort of uh, going concern or something like that. So I guess that would be an argument that she can make some sort of contractual one. But because it's a CIR, I think she would be precluded probably from trying to get value from separate property. Um, but again, that was already decided. Findings were already made. That's not, I guess that's not what we're here for today because those findings were already made on the, the summary judgment motion. Um, but I think it sounds like her argument is more of a business argument. I think she's never precluded from making that if she's if she's claiming a contract, then she's, you know, and, and he put in this and, and she did this in exchange for that. I think that's always probably valid, if that makes sense. It was a long-winded way of saying yes, but. I appreciate the response. Thank you. Uh, anything else you want to say at this point, Ms. Winkles? No, I just, uh, Your Honor, the problem is, is this case is constantly evolving and going backwards. Um, my fear is that we're going to be in court litigating property that's probably worth very little uh, for the rest of time. And so I'm hoping that we can uh, slim down the issues uh, for trial. And that's what we're attempting to do today. Thank you. Ms. Gonitz? Yes, Your Honor. 
Uh, any any additional argument or comment you'd like to uh, present on the issue? Uh, yes, I, I had some things to say. Uh, sorry, let me just um, uh, writing a couple things. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, I consider what council just said, and if it just I have to say, okay. Uh, <clears throat> earlier, you're, you had mentioned we've been to court in December regarding these assets. We've been to court a number of times over this list of assets. And I put forth great effort to make sure he had possession. Uh, so I'm feeling a little bit <laughs> like this court today. Uh, I don't believe bad faith is the right term. Uh, again, I, I apologize. I come from a, an accounting operations management and construction arena. I may not use the correct legal terminology. Uh, so ultimately, last year at this time, I had a house. I had access to three vehicles. I had all my business tools in order. I was getting geared up to remodel our home, and I had <laughs> parentage of four children, okay? <laughs> Today, while also maintaining my business property. A year later, I am considered homeless. I don't have a vehicle to get to work. I don't have business tools to go to work, and I am in fear of contact of any of my children because my ex-spouses will have me arrested if I contact them. So in a CIR, <laughs> or any type of business disillusion, if business disillusion or CIR, the difference is love and affection and a long-term stable relationship with intention of, uh, in my terms, a mutual retirement plan. I, don't, I have business relationships with a lot of people. Mr. Bob is the only person I made a retirement plan with over the last five years. So that's the difference in a business agreement versus a CIR is I love this guy and resources were pulled into a long-term retirement portfolio. I started financial services at age 20. It's something I do. I help people build up their homes and their retirements. And I built a retirement with Mr. Box, and that looked one direction. Today, our directions have changed. His position has not changed much. He still has his car. He still has the house. He still has all the assets. He has his job, and he has access to his daughter. So, here again, we're arguing over property. I built a shed off the back of the property. It's a $40,000 shed. We haven't discussed my either payout or reclamation of said shed. It's on the property. If we assign Mr. Bob ownership of Parkview, what happens to my investment? Part of our contract last year when I started construction is that he pays me for the job that I did, AKA the hardwood floor remodel, he was supposed to pay me for the job of refinishing the hardwood floors before he began using them. It is my guesstimate after a year that he is using the floors that he has not paid for yet. It's standard contracting agreement. It's something he agreed to. He failed to pay and yet is using the assets. How do I claim ownership of just the hardwood floors? You know? So I am seeking payment over my investment into that property. But I own the floors. I own the paint on the walls. I own all of the elements that went into making that a house. So I, we can't split the house, you know, so I'm willing to cash out. But until there's a cash out value assigned that I can put onto my balance sheet because I'm in tax season, I have to file taxes. My quote, quote, either CIR and or employer has not paid in two years. You know what that does to my balance sheet as a business? I can't get a loan because I can't claim an income because the guy that I've been working for for the last two years hasn't chose to deposit money into any of my accounts for the work that I've done. I'm stuck until valuation is determined and I either have a uh, loss of the $100,000 that he said that he owed me last July, June. This, this issue hasn't changed one bit. In May of last year, he put in a protection order stating, I said he owed me $100,000. He said I was insane. He needed protection from me because I wanted paid out for my job. So the issue is still the same. I've done the math three different ways. I've done it CIR. I've done it business. I've done it as an employee. It's a $100,000 difference on my balance sheet. I can't erase that gap. So either I still in court that I just lost $100,000 by trying to leave a relationship <laughs> or I get paid or whatever. But in order for me to prove to my investors that I had value the last two years and I actually did something with my time and I can prove that I did something with my time, I can't prove payment for anything that I've done with either of the two house remodels that I've done with, this, with the respondent. I've remodeled two homes and I don't have payment for either home that I've remodeled. That's a $100,000 deficit in my income statement. I need to address that. It's tax season. I would like to take care of this money issue. 
if we wanted to settle on the money, we can settle this case. It's not an issue of assets or items. You can have everything from the relationship. I just need the ability to have my investors say, yeah, you're a good uh, investment. We'll go ahead and approve your loan so I can move forward in life. And I need a way to get to work and I need my business tools to do the job. So I'm happy to buy my own, but I need valuation and the money to do that to move forward. And that's ultimately all we're disputing is what do I get paid for remodeling these two homes with this guy? We had an agreement on both of them. I did my part. I put in my skill and my labor. He offered assets as part of his consideration for what I did. Now he's trying to rescind his offer of those assets, like the expedition. He, he gifted that to me in 18, put me on the insurance in April and claimed it stolen in May. I don't understand, but I don't want that car. I need a different car though, you know? So yeah. I don't want Let's the expedition. Ask you a good question. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate your feedback and, and the information that you're sharing. Um, more specifically, th this is a, a motion related in part to the December 29th, 23 order where the court made a, a finding of separate property as it relates to the Parkview address, the boathouse and the property in exhibit F. So I'm hoping you can address your comments to, to that, that issue. Um, Ms. Winkles made an argument that that order had been ordered. There is no motion for reconsideration, no appeal of, of that particular order. And so at this point, the court has made a ruling related to that property. And basically this is, her motion is to for lack of a better term, kind of rubber stamp that and, and, and grant it as a partial summary judgment as it relates to those those three categories of items, the residence, the boathouse, and the, and the property in Exhibit F. So while the information you're sharing is, is obviously important, uh, I, I'm hoping you can focus your comments on the issue that's before before the court today, which is, uh, should, that, should, the, should there be an order establishing the real property at Parkview, the boathouse, and the property in Exhibit F as the separate property of Mr. Bob, and then move forward to a, a separate trial probably, or mediation, what have you, whether there is a committed intimate relationship or, or and if there is to be any type of division of property or, or what have you. So I'm inclined at this point because of that prior ruling without an appeal, without a reconsideration motion of, of granting the motion that Ms. Winkles has brought and then allowing the parties to, to work on other aspects of the case, whether it be through mediation or, or through trial, which would include the committed intimate relationship argument and potential separation or division of property and, and funds and the like. So I'm hoping you can address uh, those issues. Is it my turn? Yeah, the question was posed to you. Okay, uh, so we're, uh, I'm looking at the, you're referring to the order granting defendant motion for partial summary judgment. That's the order you're referring to. Yes, dated December 29th, 2023. Okay. Um, as I said, I am not trying to separate assets. I am simply attempting to secure my uh, interest in at some point uh, getting paid out for what I've put in. So uh, as far as Parkview Drive go, I have an interest in there. Um, I'm happy to allow him. I believe he has to have a clean title to refinance. And if that's the case, fine. But I I do have an interest in that property. How do we uh, mark that? And then um, the, the 2000 Expedition, it was my vehicle. I'm happy to have that be his vehicle, but I do need a replacement vehicle because it, it was mine and I don't have an alternate. The boathouse, I don't have any interest in. I'm happy to, to release that. Um, so I'm, I'm not arguing, uh, allowing the order for him to have releasement of title. I'm nervous they won't honor my interest at a later point. Right, that's what it sounds like is, is your concern. Your concern is that if the court finalizes this and says the, the separate property uh, of the residence is Mr. Bob's, then you're, you're concerned about your contribution to the value of that of that separate property and, and being reimbursed for any any funds or labor expended. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you for answering that question. I, I appreciate that. Um, let, let's, if we could, if Ms. Winkles, do you have any additional items? I think I have a fairly clear idea of, of what the what the proper outcome of today's hearing is. I have no further argument, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Granitz, I'll give you the last word. Any, any final comments you'd like to present? Um, I, I, uh, I'm reviewing my notes. Uh, oh, uh, discovery. We're still in the discovery phase. Um, no, I, I, I think that we discussed the necessary issues on my list. Okay. All right. Thank you. I, I appreciate the perspective and input of, of both parties. I think that the salient issue 
Well, there's two salient issues. One is that there was a December 29, 2023 ruling which uh, made a determination of what the separate property involved here is based on the dates. The June 18th or June 2018 is a key date. The April 23, 2023 is a key date. And the court made a ruling based on, on those key dates. The court didn't make any determinations as far as a committed intimate relationship, didn't make any, any determinations as to contribution or labor expended or benefits granted. Uh, the court just made that determination about that those particular items of property. Uh, so I'm going to grant the, the the motion brought by Mr. Bob via Ms. Winkles on the motion for judgment on less than the, all the claims in, that was presented. And I'll just double check with Ms. Garnes. Did you receive the proposed order that Ms. Winkles submitted along with the, the motion? There's there's two of them. It looks like one is order on judgment for less than all claims or parties. Uh, that's where it basically says that the real the property, the Parkview Drive, the boat house, personal property, and Exhibit F. The separate property of Mr. Bob. The other is the final judgment on motion for partial summary judgment uh, that basically indicates the, the, the same. Um, so while it's not subject to division, there's I think if there was a properly asserted counterclaim of contribution or uh, enhancement of value or, or labor not, not compensated, I think those probably still remain. So uh, any concerns about those proposed orders from Ms. Winkles that she submitted? I apologize, Your Honor. I don't have those in front of me, and I haven't recently reviewed them. Uh, I can't. So I'll have to. I, I don't have feedback about them because I haven't looked them over, or I don't have them to look. Sure. Uh, sure. Um, so just looking over them, we looked at looked at them previously. I'm just looking at them again. Um, it basically it reasserts, reiterates that the Parkview address is is separate property, as is the boathouse, as is the personal property in Exhibit F. And that that he's entitled to a, a judgment affirming that property uh, separate property status. Um, so I think the orders as presented, um, I'll, I'll sign off on, on both of those. Ms. Winkles, um, I have a photocopy of those that were submitted as proposed orders. Would you be in a position to send and send a carbon send those to me via email, a clean copy, and uh, CC Ms. Garnets in that? Absolutely. Sense? Okay, that would be appreciated. Uh, once I receive those, I'll, I'll sign off on those. Um, and then the parties will be free to, to negotiate and mediate and or set for trial or, or what have you. So I All appreciate right. the input from the parties. I'll look forward to that email. So right. I think that concludes our hearing for today. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll be in adjournment. Thank you, Your Honor. So the order is set as written. And if I want to make an interjection, I have to do that separate. Well, or I, not that's not the right word, but yeah. But. So sometimes what will happen, we'll have a, a hearing and uh, the court will make an oral ruling and a proposed order at that time had, will not have been submitted. And so then the parties based on the court's oral ruling will prepare an order to match what the court orders. This, we're in a dis distinct situation here where the, a proposed order was submitted to, to all parties, including the court, and uh, ostensibly was reviewed by all parties. And then a court has made a ruling that is basically in conformity with that proposed order. Uh, so in my view, that proposed order accurately portrays what the court ordered here today. And so a separate hearing to kind of ratify or affirm that order is not necessary because I've done that here in that I've reviewed the proposed order, I feel it's appropriate, uh, and that you, you, Ms. Granitz, had received a copy of that order prior to the hearing. Um, and so there's an opportunity to review that, opportunity to be heard on that on that issue. So uh, from my vantage point, uh, uh, further hearing is not necessary uh, because I have reviewed that order and I think it fairly captures uh, what, what I wanted to say. <clears throat> uh, so in theory, I shouldn't have to come back to court about this specific list of items again, because it should be done, right? I, we could I, be done arguing over this list of items. We can move on to the next subject. You know, from, from my vantage point, that that the exhibit that uh, exhibit F that contains different items of property, that's the separate property of Mr. Bob. Uh, where the parties decide to go or what's important to the parties, I'll, I'll leave that to each, and I won't make any perspective rulings on that. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, we've been it, it's been a while. We've been over this these items a long time, and so if we can bring these to a close, I'm great with that. So. Okay. Uh, I appreciate your time today, Your Honor. All right, very good. I appreciate the input from all parties. Thank you.